Every single day, I see people that kind of know what they're doing in Blender get bottlenecked by their working speed. So I wanted to go over some methods and exercises that you can use to really speed up your workflow. I'm going to divide these exercises into three different levels of skill that the average person can comprehend. So let's go ahead and get started at level one speed. This is the speed most beginners or hobbyists probably work at. At this stage, you might experience not knowing what to do at any given moment or knowing what to do, but you forgot how to do it. Pretty much everyone who uses Blender can benefit from being proficient beyond this zone. The first issue is navigation. The seconds and minutes spent fumbling around the scene really do add up over time. Here's a tip that I think can help beginners with navigation. Sometimes it helps me to imagine an invisible origin that the camera rotates around and zooms in towards. This origin moves when you pan the camera, but not when you orbit or zoom. One exercise that I did when starting out was get as lost as possible in the scene and then try to get the camera back about to the place where it's positioned in the default scene. When you get in control of the navigation of your scene, you won't be slowed down when you're trying to look at any specific thing. As far as execution, at this stage, it can be useful to start implementing some add-ons into your workflow. Some good examples of add-ons for speeding up your workflow are Node Wrangler, which allows you to view any node just by shift control clicking on it, and the Stored Views add-on, which allows you to add cameras to your current view, switch between them, as well as many other things. As far as general knowledge, now is the time to memorize your basic functions, the transform hotkeys are a good example, as well as axis constraint and basic edit mode functions such as inset, extrude, and bevel. At this stage, the less you have to rely on these icons on the side, the faster you will go. There's a lot of infographics out there that are meant to help you memorize hotkeys, although some of these might get into more advanced topics. Now that stuff is great, and it's pretty fast. As long as you're a baby who doesn't know how to use a keyboard, we can go a lot faster. Let's go ahead and get to the real stuff. For navigation, you should have absolutely no problem navigating scenes anymore. You should be making use of isolation mode by pressing the slash key. There's other navigation shortcuts, such as the period key and the home key. Period snaps your view to a specific object. Home snaps your view to all objects. This one should go without saying, but all the orthographic keys, like one, three, and seven, those should all be muscle memory by now. And there's a few more. A lot of the tips that I find are in this view view menu up here. I'll give you a couple ideas for the interface here. If you click and drag on these tabs, you can scroll between them. If you have a material selected and you click and drag on this icon, you can drop materials onto objects. By pressing Control L, you can link materials and modifiers between different objects. If you press the E key over a color box, you can sample a specific color for that, or if you click and drag, it'll average all those colors. You can and should be using reference images, but don't add them from here. You can just drag and drop them into your scenes. If you click and drag on these submenus, they'll all open and close when you hover over them. I never want to see you closing things like this again. It's so, so slow and tedious. Just do that. When you're testing multiple options that have a menu like this, you don't have to choose them individually. You can just control scroll wheel on them. This allows you to keep your eye focused on the image so you can actually tell what the results are. And finally, if you want to change multiple fields at once, like these three scale values, you can just click and drag over all of them and then type the number you want. You could also click and drag and drag, and that gets even faster if you can nail it really precisely. If I ever see you selecting things like this, I mean, we're, we're just going to have a problem at that point. You don't have to do it, guys. All you got to do is control left click and it'll find the shortest route. Look at that. When was the last time you were this fast? How are you going to select all these faces in here, huh? Without getting any of these pillars? Tell me, how are you going to do it? You're going to select one of these faces. You're going to go into your search menu with F3. You're going to go to select linked flat faces and change the sharpness. Look at that. It's music to my ears. You can press shift G and there's a million ways you can select something. What I'm trying to say here is if you're trying to reach that next level, you've got to know your tools more. You should have a general idea at this level of the things that are available to you. Even in my very latest video, area lights weren't cutting it. So I made a softbox out of a plane with a color ramp and then added a constraint to track it to the subject. Now look, I can move it wherever I want. No more of this move and rotate on all these axes and trying to line it, get, get out of there. Just get it out of my sight. This program has so many options that it gives you. I tried to explain all of them one time and the entire program of Premiere couldn't even handle me talking about it. There are excellent ways to learn these things. Grant Abbott made some videos specifically for this as well as myself. Something that I used to do was go into individual menus and ask, okay, do I know what every single one of these options does? Practice is really important in this stage. Make things that you are passionate about and you will find your own personal techniques that will make you incredibly more efficient at your work. All right, well, that was level two. And if you master all of that, you're gonna be pretty fast, uh, especially if you like watching paint drawing and everything, but uh, can we go faster? 
All right, welcome to the real, real stuff. Most of this is reserved pretty much exclusively for speedrunners and all that. Obviously, you should be navigating at light speed. You shouldn't even really need a mouse at this point. You can add certain objects to a quick favorites menu. And then when you press the Q key, you can select those items from your list. Also, if you're really getting into it, you should know that in pretty much every single menu, every item is gonna have a letter underlined. And if you click that letter, it chooses the option. So I could just press T after pressing Shift A and it'll add text. A good exercise for this one is to add in every mesh object and then delete them all in a row. So if you press shift A, that'll open the add menu. M goes into mesh. And then in this case, it's going to be P. When I press X to delete, I can press D to confirm. So all together now, shift A and PXD. The next one is the cube. So shift A. See, I can't even talk as fast as I can do it. Let's see if we can get the world record here. Yeah, that was pretty fast. And that is certifiably unnecessarily fast. But is there a faster level? Yes, I do get asked this all the time. If you do go up about 10 levels or so, this is about where I reside. Now, uh, full disclaimer, you are going to need a few things, a full haptic suit, a USB steering wheel, MIDI controller, uh, 10 monitors is a good uh, beginner number there. You are going to need to memorize Blender's entire source code. You're also going to need a pain tolerance of and a credit score of 900 or more. I mean, that's just standard procedure up at this level. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment in the description below. Take it easy.